it's time. The MMO genre needs to die. At long last. In fact, I think it may be the best thing for MMORPG fans if it does. This person doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Before you go reaching for the dislike button, hear me out, because I think the MMO genre now has some flaws that cannot be fixed in the current state of the genre. And I think the MMORPG space right now is also reminiscent of other genres that ended up dying and fading from the limelight. If you've been gaming since the early 90s, what I'm about to say is going to be pretty obvious to you. Sometimes genres die, and that's a perfectly natural thing. The point-and-click adventure genre was a big thing in the early 90s, with titles like Monkey Island, The Day of the Tentacle, and King's Quest being amongst hundreds of other titles dominating the PC gaming market. Turn the clock forward to today, and the genre is a small indie enthusiast thing. The idea of a blockbuster, super-hyped, AAA point-and-click adventure just now seems impossible. The reason the point-and-click adventure genre died was multifaceted, but also kinda simple, and definitely not entirely the same as the issues facing MMORPGs, I'm just using it as an example. The games outlasted their historical and social context. With the increased availability of games and the rise of the internet, they simply ceased to be the big hits that they were. No one wanted to fuss around with moon logic for hours, or worse, need to call a paid tip line to progress the game. Other genres were on the rise in the West with JRPGs finally arriving, Doom clones, and soon 3D collectible platformers that would explode in popularity. The genre got outcompeted for attention, and its fundamental mechanics just weren't that good anymore for players. Certainly not enough to justify the amount of them available on the market to play, or the cost of making them. Now, there are other genres that have died, and came back, such as the immersive sims like Thief, System Shock, and Vampire the Masquerade coming back in the form of Dishonored and Prey, and CRPGs like Boulder's Gate and Icewind Dale dying off besides a few indie revivals here and there, only to come back with huge fury in the explosive popularity of Boulder's Gate 3. More on those at the end of the video. But now I want to go through the flaws that MMOs have that I think justify the genre dying and why I think it will. Number one, it's not good if it's not an addiction. I'm tired of people telling me what I can't do. They say I can't drink on a plane. They say I can't bang on a plane. I say I can't be a pilot. Remember when that guy asked the creative lead of the Final Fantasy XIV dev team what he should do when he got bored of playing the game? And the dev told him that he should try other games or do something else for a while, maybe touch some grass? And the whole MMO community lost its mind praising this dev for being so honest? Well, there's a reason for their surprise. No one's being stupid here. For almost every dev and also some players in the MMORPG space, the idea of not wanting to commit life-destroying amounts of your free time to an MMORPG amounts to either a failure of the player to enjoy the game, or more often than not, a failure of the developer to make the game sufficiently addictive. The current way in which both developers and players relate to the genre is just not in a healthy state. And because it's not in a healthy state, we're unlikely to see new games that have healthy and happy populations. Because people should be looking for games that are fun, a nice experience, not a new life-altering addiction. I want some crack! <laughs> this is a fundamental cultural flaw we've had in MMORPGs for years, and it's not going away anytime soon. Features like in-game rating and progression are also one of the core features of a lot of modern MMORPGs. Too few people in the modern era want to schedule two to three nights a week to raid between two to five hours an evening. Are you kidding me? That's, that's, that's great. Absolutely. That's more than Too few people also have the time and dedication necessary to work their way up in a clan to play games like EVE or Albion Online and really get the most out of those systems. And the people that do, well, they've already got their game their friends, their community, and, and good for them. But the only way for a new MMORPG to enter the market would be to destroy the already existing healthy ecosystems. In this respect, more MMORPGs being made is kind of the last thing we want. Number two, MMORPGs are bad for content creators. Action. Now, like it or not, content creation plays a huge role in the modern gaming space and MMORPGs are really difficult to create content for. There are only two kinds of videos outside of, say, tutorials and gaming info that you can provide in the MMORPG space. Sure, there are other rare exceptions like Mad Sorrow, who's absolutely amazing, but he's really a rare exception. The vast majority of MMORPG content is either, number one, someone completely 
game that is already released to no end and generating content off the backlash from the players of that game, driving it through the algorithm. And number two, making absolutely shameless hype content for a new MMORPG that is going to change your life. Obviously, I don't have any dislike for the content creators that do this, but let's be honest about how the YouTube algorithm works. It would be nice if people watched your videos so you're going to play the game because it's just the way reality is. And you will need to look at MMORPG YouTubers like Kira TV, who completely quit the space to become the ginger British version of Sunny V2, or Asmongold, or Soda Poppin, or almost anyone that's branched out from the MMORPG space to have greater creative freedom because it's just difficult to be a content creator in the MMORPG space. Do you remember when you lost your passion for this work? what's going to happen when Ashes of Creation comes out. There's going to be a flurry of videos made by these content creators, and then they're going to go back to doing something else after the game collapses because people won't pay their subscription past two to three months. That's the reality. I know I'm going to make some people mad, but it's just what's going to happen because it's just the way the world is. Number three, game loyalties are too strong for new games to enter the market. You smart, you loyal, you grateful. I appreciate that. In a world that is already too determined by individual biases and loyalties, MMORPG fans often outdo politicians, bankers, and activists by exhibiting a loyalty that can kind of be worrying at times. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. If you criticize someone's favorite MMORPG on the internet, prepare to be accused of being part of a global conspiracy to destroy their game. Everyone remember the time Josh Drive Hayes destroyed Terra? Yeah, I don't because I'm not crazy, but you get the point. Tell the people, I died, so they may live. But this goes back to the number one point in this list. The MMORPG addiction cycle is so bad that any criticism of the thing that you're addicted to immediately becomes personal rather than reflective. This in turn means that developers of these games often don't receive the feedback the game needs in an accurate fashion. Instead, they tend to double down on those already addicted or those already in the fan base of that game. I live in a dictatorship, a self-perpetuating autocracy in which the working... Without attempting to think about the long-term financial security or broader appeal of the game. MMORPGs have always had a risk of focusing too much on their core group of players and losing the game's broader appeal, as we've seen with countless MMOs, particularly modern retail World of Warcraft. Number four, the space is overcrowded. What do you say, old man Banjo? We haven't had a decent MMORPG in years. How can you be telling me that the MMO space is overcrowded when you're on this other hand telling me that there aren't any new good MMORPGs? Well, what makes MMORPGs so special is that they're not like other games. They are worlds in and of themselves. So step back a bit. My favorite city I've ever visited is Ljubljana in Slovenia. But I don't ever want to go to a, another Ljubljana I like that one. MMORPGs are much like that. They're places, they're worlds, and we enjoy that world in that time and that place. And even games that tend to die their individual deaths by publishers often get resurrected as private servers precisely because of that love. And often these private servers are even much better than the original games, as has been the case very often in Ultima and EverQuest in World of Warcraft. EverQuest has never been in as good a state as it is now, and you can play it for free on a lot of different private servers. A dedicated group of individuals has entirely remade Ultima Online from almost the ground up with a new client, and it's also amazing and worth getting into now even if you've never played before. I found it shocking to play Ultima Online recently and find new players playing this old game. The World of Warcraft private server community has been so successful that Blizzard have literally been stealing a vast number of, uh, sorry, borrowing a vast number of ideas from servers like Chromicraft and Ascension and adding them to their main game and season of discovery because of the huge successes these private servers have seen. And all of these people have largely been doing it, largely been doing it out of love for these worlds. Unlike other games, MMORPGs are worlds in and of themselves. People have feelings for them that are not comparable to other genres, at least in my experience. And this has led to a fundamental oversaturation of the existence of these worlds in public consciousness. And people who think that we've now got to sit around in 2024 and hope that a PvPvE-based Kickstarter MMO that's been in development for a decade that requires a subscription will save the genre just aren't thinking clearly. Nice.
The very best outcome for a game like Ashes of Creation is it turns into a cult hit similar to Albion Online, a game for people that like PvPvE content, a game for people that dig its particular style. But the idea of its competing even with the geriatric MMOs we have today in OSRS, World of Warcraft, or ESO is probably not realistic. Number 5. The space is too exploitable. I'm not going to linger on this point for too long because I've already made too many videos on it on this channel. From MMORPGs pioneering the worst pay-to-win tactics to a plethora of the very worst of Kickstarter scams, the combination of the addictive potential of MMORPGs combined with the need for creators to hype the content has created a toxic cycle of unscrupulous people and companies realizing that MMORPG gamers are easy marks. For every success story like Albion Online, there have been 10 Chronicles of Illyria scam games or games with radically broken promises like Archage Unchained. And this often applies as much to the content creators as the players. Anyone remember when Con Carnage donated $100,000 of his own money to keep alive a game that now looks as if it had been designed in 2006 and it's in alpha in 2024? The passion of MMORPG gamers is just too exploitable and I'm opting out. And I think what contributes to a lot of the problems in the MMORPG community in general these days is the feeling of constantly being used and exploited and disappointed by development companies over the past decade. So let's reevaluate the genre. In the end, I'm actually positive about the state of MMORPGs. It's just a sad truth that I think it needs to fade away for the moment. Look at it. CRPGs of the kind of Fallout 2 and Baldur's Gate fell off in the early 2000s, and really, we had nothing similar in terms of AA or AAA budgets making them until suddenly in 2023, Baldur's Gate 3 just explodes on the scene. Now, I didn't really like Baldur's Gate 3, but that's also sort of the point. Genres are tied to the generations that play them. For me, the best MMORPGs will always be Ultima Online and EverQuest, with Classic WoW being a distant third. I'm sure for you it's different, but the reality is that our generation, and by us I mean people between the ages of 30 and 55, have really explored the MMO genre to death. It's time to stop backing Kickstarters, hoping for the latest Amazon Studio game. Enjoy what we have, especially the amazing communities that have preserved our older MMORPGs. Let the genre go quietly into the good night and we'll see what happens in 15 years time when a new generation of gamers and game developers decide to put their mind to reviving this genre. Peace.